Former intelligence official David Grush made headlines in 2023 when he claimed that the U.S. government has a secret UFO crash retrieval program. But what to do if you, as a civilian, see a UFO fall out of the sky? As you're about to see, one family had to answer that question for themselves. July 5th, 2022. James Dean and his family are fishing in the Gulf of Mexico, about 72 miles off the coast of Florida. James is recording yet another successful catch on his phone when something spectacular calls everyone's attention to the sky. A few miles away, a round object spirals toward the ocean. After five more objects fall in succession, James and his family decide to check it out for themselves. But as they near the site of the drop, they discover streaks of fluorescent green. When the video gets posted, commenters claim it captured a crashing UFO, and the green tint is an otherworldly result of that wreckage. If it is a crashed ET, it's allegedly not the first. On January 8th, 2014, a large object fell into the Pacific Ocean, and the U.S. Space Command was able to confirm it did not come from this star system. Some believe that it isn't something naturally occurring, that it was actually alien in origin. And videos like this showing objects falling from the sky are actually alien craft returning home. That's because, as journalist MJ Benias points out, some believe that the Earth's oceans are actually home to underwater alien bases. Within the UFO narrative, there are UFOs, which are unidentified flying objects, but there's also something called a USO, which is unidentified submersible object. Some people claim that they belong to potentially some sort of extraterrestrial species, and it resides in the depths of the ocean that we have yet to explore. This video, taken in 2015 on Russia's Lake Baikal, shows a blue-green light in the water, a light that we could not identify, and it gets weirder. In 1982, Russian divers were operating under the water when all of a sudden they bumped into these strange creatures wearing silvery suits. So is this video from the Gulf of Mexico further proof of water-dwelling aliens? While the idea of underwater alien bases is still speculative, underwater human bases are very real. In fact, the coast of Florida is home to an underwater research facility known as the Aquarius Reef Base. Is James's video proof of an underwater facility of the alien variety? Our experts dive in to learn more. Before we get to the object itself, we ask marine biologist Shea Steingast to address that green glow. Could it be natural? Bioluminescence is a really common ocean adaptation, and there's at least 1,500 different species of fish that bioluminesce. This adaptation can be used to warn predators, lure prey, or even communicate. But Stein Gas doesn't think that's what's happening here. If there were animals bioluminescing or glowing here, it wouldn't be this bright, vivid green. That's not a typical color. And second off, we wouldn't be seeing this during the day. This is something entirely different than bioluminescent organisms. So we ask aviation expert Tim McMillan, is an unidentified submerged object producing this light? There have been reports of USOs. However, you know, in those cases, these are transmedium objects, so objects which are able to enter the water or exit the water without any substantial change to that environment. That's not what we see here. Notice how this bright green spreads across the water. It doesn't look as much like the roving green light of an underwater vehicle as it does a broad spill. We obviously see this object has interacted with the environment. If it's not nature and it's not aliens, that leaves one culprit, humans. So could this be a secret government experiment? Typically, if you're going to detest anything in secret, you wouldn't expect them to release a fluorescent dye. There's a huge indication this is by design. It's something that has been released on purpose to draw attention. But draw attention to what? Astronomer Mark D'Antonio says there are a few possibilities. In almost every case where there's an accident, the captain might release a fluorescein dye marker to mark their location for rescue. This is used by commercial shipping, defense department, in submarines, surface vessels, rocket launches, and so forth. But McMillan thinks he can narrow it down a little further by taking a closer look at the falling object that started it all. 
you'll notice that the object is leaving a corkscrew contrail. What that says is that there's been a profound change in the center of mass and center of pressure of that object. If you're looking at a multi-stage rocket, uh, the first stage detaches itself, second stage takes over. So that first stage where it was stable when it was all configured as one rocket is now no longer stable, and that's where we get that spinning. OK, so if it's debris from a rocket launch, which one? Now, I looked up some schedules and found that there was no SpaceX launch on July 5th, which is when this was purported to have been done. So where does that leave us? Well, there are launches that are unknown. You won't find them listed anywhere online because they're classified launches. Our verdict? We're pretty sure these are fallen rocket boosters intended to be recovered for reuse if that bright green dye is any indication. But we agree with Mark D'Antonio that this could be a top secret launch. The true purpose of this mission remains a mystery. <laughs>